this is Dina from An Empowered Life and we are on the road and we are in Terry Walter's home. I want to first thank you for having us here today and I'd like to introduce Terry Walters, um, author of a best-selling cookbook, uh, Clean Food, and you are also an educator, you are also a speaker, and a consultant, mm -hmm. um, all about nutrition and healthy living. So I am so excited to talk with you today. Thank you. Yes, and to... Welcome to my home. Thank you. My kitchen. Yes, we're in Terry's <laughs> kitchen. And um, we have your three books out because she has um, created three cookbooks. Um, we have the very first one that you created on the stand. Yes. Clean food. Mm -hmm. And would definitely love to hear a little bit about each of your books, mm -hmm. anything that you feel that you wanted to share um, with our viewers. Sure. Well, Clean Food was the first book and yes. um, it really is the culmination it's the culmination of a journey, mm -hmm. but it was also the beginning of a journey. So um, it was um, in my one of my final years of college when I discovered that I had high cholesterol and I knew I needed to do something about it and I had zero interest in going on medication to lower it. Um, and so I moved off campus got an apartment with a kitchen and started teaching myself how to cook real food. Yeah. And um, at that time, there were no cookbooks that you know featured kale and no sugar and no refined you know ingredients. Um, and so I was pretty much on my own. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, using the food to heal myself, and then as life goes on, using the food to heal my family. And um, when push came to shove, people started. I'd say probably 90% of the people looked at me like I had three heads when I said, oh yeah, I eat quinoa and kale and mm -hmm. I use kombu, like what? what's kombu, right? And, um, and the other 10% said, could you show me how to use that and tell mm -hmm. me about those foods? And so in this kitchen, yes. I started teaching cooking classes for my friends and after about three years, they said, could you please bind your recipes? And fast forward, that's exactly what clean food was. It was this collection of recipes that had healed and nourished me and my family for so many years. Some of them are my mom's recipes, nice. um, but all really simple, easy ways of getting in these foods that we all need more of, you know, no matter what else is on your plate. So, um, and uh, I self-published that book, and um, a year later it came out formally published, yep. and it's in its third edition now. Um, it was a bestseller within the first week of its coming out, and uh, just, you know, it's kind of like my first baby, I so <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm super proud of it, and, and the journey, super blessed by the journey that it's led to mm -hmm. with the additional books. Yes. So, yeah. So in looking through your book mm -hmm. and really being able to see your journey through the pages, mm -hmm. one of the things that I really loved about your, your book was actually many things. One of them that I keyed in right away to because mm -hmm. I, you know, I'm all about wellness and mindfulness is you actually had a little blurb on meditation, mm -hmm. which I thought was amazing, which I have never seen in a cookbook. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny that we wouldn't have mindfulness. Like, what do we do that's more mindful than nourishing ourselves three times a day? Mm -hmm. But, um, and all of my books and everything I do is also organized by season, which yes. is also part of that mindfulness practice. And I mean, let's face it, when I was writing this book, mm -hmm. um, you know, I had young children and I was just doing what I could to put healthy food in them, on the table, nourish myself. Um, and I, I tell people all the time, like, there's no end goal here. There's just, right. if you can take one breath and slow down, if you can remember to sit down when you eat your food, I, I think all the time, like, take one breath before you mm -hmm. prepare your food so you can cook love into your food and not the right. stress of your day. Right. And don't sweat it, because if you don't, like, take that one breath when you sit down to eat your food, right? Mm -hmm. And for a lot of people, and for myself in particular, I know that, if I have a candle on the table, that is a reminder to take that breath, right? Because I, I light the candle and take the breath, right? And first of all, if there's a candle on the table, I'm more likely to sit down to eat my food and That's light true. the candle. These are all parts of mindfulness. Yes. Um, and let's face it, like, 
you know, none of us eat for our best nutrition. I mean, it would be nice if we did, don't get me wrong, but we all have emotional connection to food. We all have yes. all sorts of motivations. So the more we can slow down and even realize that every time we do this, we're making a choice, and if we can be present in the moment to actually make that choice, mm -hmm. then we're moving forward, right? And we have more possibility, more opportunity to make the choices that heal and nourish. Right. And I think something that goes along with that is it allows us to be a more mindful eater mm -hmm. versus kind of falling into the trap of that mindless eating. Right. Right. And that's going to look different for every person. And that's mm -hmm. why I'm so excited about our upcoming workshop yes. because um, it is different for each person, what they experience. What works for me may not work for you, mm -hmm. but the more we come together and support each other, because right. let's face it, like nobody likes to change in isolation. We need support. Right. So Absolutely. the more we can support each other, learn from each other, share our experiences, and have someone there who can facilitate. I mean, I've worked with thousands of people at this point. Mm -hmm. So I bring all of that as well. I don't think of myself as the teacher so much, though, as uh, much more as the facilitator. And mm -hmm. we create a safe place and see. And sometimes it's just holding up the mirror to yourself that makes you say, huh. Maybe that's the habit where I should start, right? Like even to, if it's just picking the low-lying fruit, what's easiest? Because mm -hmm. once you make a change, um, then it leads to the next and the next. And every step we take, whether it's closer to the source or deeper within, mm -hmm. is um, a, a huge improvement in our health. Yes. So a couple of things that I wanted to ask you specifically mm -hmm. with your cookbook is you talk about food for the seasons. Mm -hmm. And I would love um, if you could share more about the benefit of food for the seasons mm -hmm. because you have beautiful recipes and, and photos and um, lots of wonderful ideas mm -hmm. about how to eat the foods of the season. Well, I have to say living in New England, I think we have the hardest job of eating yes. seasonally because not only do we have four seasons, but you know, it's 60 degrees today and um, two days ago it was 30 degrees and snowing. Right. Um, and it's going to go back and forth. It seems like we have a different season sometimes every day. Um, but Mother Nature is very, very um, good at giving us exactly what we need mm -hmm. to maintain balance with the season. She mm -hmm. gives us the nutrition and the nutrients that we need, whether mm -hmm. it's, you know, it, I mean, just think of the cycle. This time of year right now, we're getting all those baby greens and they sprout up and they're very bitter. And we eat mm -hmm. those baby greens and they're cleansing and it lightens us up and pushes through some of the stagnancy and dampness from winter. Um, from all the carbohydrates and, and sugars of winter. And pretty mm -hmm. soon those plants will bear fruit, which will have high water content and be very cooling for us in the summer, right? And right. then the fruit dies back and the plant dies down and all of that energy goes down into the ground in the fall and then we harvest the roots. And the roots make us strong and give us strength and build our immune system for mm -hmm. the winter that's ahead. And in the winter, well, here sometimes in New England it can be a little challenging, but mm -hmm. we eat those sweet fruits and vegetables, the apples and the pears and the winter squashes and the dark leafy greens that winter over and bring in sweetness because we're not outside getting that chlorophyll from the sun, right, and getting that vitamin D. So it, Mother Nature gives us exactly what we need. The problem is, one, listening, mm -hmm. and two, the conflicting signs with what our body says it needs. And what mm -hmm. happens is, when you think about this clean food on a spectrum of like, we pick it from the earth over here and process, process, process over here, mm -hmm. the closer we eat over here, the more we're getting cravings and mm -hmm. uh, we get signs from perhaps addiction, addiction mm -hmm. to sugars and unhealthy fats that make it harder to understand what the body needs. And so everything I do is about like, let's see where we can move closer to the source, get cleaner on the inside. And the really great thing about that is the cleaner you are here, the clearer we are yes. here, and then this connection becomes clearer. It yes. You don't have to eat, sit down and eat at the source in order for that to happen. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of moving closer. Every step in that direction brings health and clarity. And you depict that very nicely in a scale in one of your books mm -hmm. and you use one food source yep. and you kind of, you know, had showcased here is kind of the purest form mm -hmm. and as we go down 
the list. Here we go to our, probably our, our less preferred choice. Mm -hmm. And I think it was nice that you did that because or sometimes allows, most preferred choice. Well, sometimes <laughs> most preferred, but not the one that if you're eating healthy. Oh, come on. I mean, there's a time and place for everything, God willing. <laughs> and it's just nice that you show like, okay, you could go here. Or you could take two steps and you can go here. It doesn't have to be a jump from here to here. That's right. Which is really nice how you presented that in your book. You know, it's funny because I can see that page in my yes. mind. I'm visualizing and I'm talking about the oats. Yes. And, um, you know, you pick the oat from the earth. And I think there's a misperception there because you cannot eat the oat from the earth. Sometimes mm -hmm. processing really does help, mm -hmm. right? I mean, I could give my kids steel cut oats, I could give them rolled oats, I could give them quick cooking oats, right? We're moving away in a way. Right. Or Cheerios, right? Mm -hmm. um, and if you're eating Cheerios and you move to quick cut, you know, quick cooking rolled oats, you know, rip open the package and pour mm -hmm. in the water and poof, mm -hmm. like, that can be a really big step. Mm -hmm. it, truthfully, people eat in this kind of more processed area. Right more often than not just for convenience. Right. So I feel my job is to show them that this can be just as convenient, mm -hmm. right? If I take steel cut oats and put them in a pot while I'm doing the dishes, so that's not really even cooking time, it's just I happen right. to be in the kitchen, but I put them in the pot, I bring it to a boil while I'm doing my dishes at night, I close it and I turn it off. Well, in the morning they'll be done. Oh, okay. So. How long does it take to cook them? As much time as it cook, took to boil the water, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Whereas most people think, oh, steel cut oats, it takes 45 minutes. I don't have that kind of time, right? right? Now all of a sudden you're much closer to the source and you, you can add your own sweetness if you want, but it won't right. be the processed, right? Put right. some maple syrup or some honey in it yep. or some chopped up apple or frozen berries, right? A little mm -hmm. cinnamon, grate some ginger. Mm -hmm. So there's lots of things that we can do. Um, mm -hmm. that save time and, and sometimes I think my job is less about teaching people how to cook and more about teaching them how to make it fit into their lives. Yes. And I think so many people are really looking for that. Yeah, myself honest. included to be honest. <laughs> yeah. Is I think that there is more of an opening of accepting some of the news and you know, some of the nutritional information that people are hearing and that people are sharing, mm -hmm. which is great. And I think though people are so stuck on how it's been for so long, they don't know how to exactly get there. Yeah. And that's what I think is great about providing cookbooks that give the, you know, the recipes and how to do it. But I also love the fact that you do classes. Mm -hmm because the hands-on activities and um, really learning in the moment is so beneficial. Well, there are three things that I see in the classes. Well, first of all, everyone thinks I'm doing the classes for them, but it's really all about me. <laughs> <laughs> Truthfully, when I teach, it keeps me on the path, mm -hmm. right? It's mm -hmm. I remind myself. I mean, sometimes I say the same things over and over, but if you're in a different place, you hear it just a little differently or you mm -hmm. remember or it connects with your life in a different way. Mm -hmm. And so for me, it really does keep me on the path. But I notice, one, it's really helpful to see somebody do it. Yes. Um, two, it's great to taste something you've never had before when it's made well with all the colors and all the tastes, right? Mm -hmm. um, and say, oh, well, one, that didn't look so hard. And two, I already know it's delicious, I'm not going to try and make it and come up with something that I don't like, right? Mm -hmm. And three, with a class, we're not only sharing a meal, but we share the whole evening together. And it's a dialogue, and people ask questions, and we pass around ingredients and talk about the difference between mm -hmm. mirin and the cooking wines at, you know, which is a naturally fermented sweet cooking wine and the other cooking wines on the shelf that are made with alcohol and high fructose corn syrup and like mm -hmm. what to look for because mm -hmm. there's so much there yes right and those messages we, we don't know how to evaluate because most of what's on a package which is the first sign you're removed from the source you're in a package but <laughs> packaged food is convenience and and most of what's on a package is marketing and has nothing to do with what's in the package Right. But the other thing about just eating clean and the workshop that we're going to be doing mm -hmm. is that it's not about deprivation. Right. So um, it's really just about bringing in. So like when you think about that spectrum, like it's not about taking away these foods and moving closer to the source. It's about identifying where you can move closer to the source, knowing mm -hmm. that like over here, 
there might be something you absolutely love. And so you're not, you don't have to get rid of it. Right. You know, hopefully most people aren't in a situation where they have to get rid of everything right then on the spot. Um, but the other nice thing is if you focus on bringing in then those foods that serve you less, mm -hmm. usually they, over time, they fall mm -hmm. to either a healthier place in the mix right. or to the wayside altogether. Absolutely. And that's why I love doing workshops and ongoing classes because, you know, let's face it, like you might get to a point where you think you figured everything out, but tomorrow it will change. Our bodies change, our environment changes, yes. our food sources and resources mm -hmm. change. Um, and so it really is ongoing and it really gives the meaning to community that we can mm -hmm. support each other, that we can help each other, that we can inspire and motivate each mm -hmm. other, you know, and, and that's really almost as nourishing, if not more nourishing than the food itself. Mm -hmm. It's the connection. Yeah. And also, some of the things that you talked about in your book that I wanted to highlight too is the, you talked a little bit about certainly the food labels mm -hmm. and what things should look like that, um, that we are eating in terms of ingredients. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to just talk a tiny bit about that piece because I feel like that's something that people may struggle with still mm -hmm. on a consistent basis. Yeah, well, you know, I, I love teaching kids as well. Mm -hmm. And I always tell the kids, what does that say? And we look at, you know, mm -hmm. the labels together. And if they can't say it, or as I tell them, if it sounds like Greek or sounds like it comes, it's made in a lab, then mm -hmm. if you can't understand it here or even just visualize how it grows, right? If you can't visualize mm -hmm. how it grows, you're not understanding it here, you're not going to know what to do with it here. Right. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we reach for the same thing in the shelf and we can, if we just, you know, that this is where the breath comes in. Okay. Before you go to the grocery store, if you can stop and take one breath, mm -hmm. just connect with that intention to buy the foods that serve you. Yes. Right? So you're putting goodness in your home because trust me, outside of your home, there'll be plenty of opportunity to, spl to splurge. So, mm -hmm. but take a little more time in the grocery store and pick mm -hmm. up the foods and read the package. And if you start to see things that you don't really know how they grow, mm -hmm. or as I say, it either grows from the land or lives off the land, right? Then yeah. put it back and look at the other packages in that area and see if you can find one that is just ingredients mm -hmm. that, you, that you recognize. Or better yet, leave the aisle and go to the perimeter of the store and see if you right. can find it without a package at all, right? right? When I would like to say, and I used to be able to say, when you buy it without the package, what you see is what you get. Yeah. Not so much anymore because there are all sorts of agendas in our food system, mm -hmm. but um, certainly you're like, more likely to do better um, when you're buying it without any processing at all. And then, yeah. of course, you know, there's the cost savings as well. When we're in the produce section and you're eating the foods that are grown in season and mm -hmm. local, those are likely to be the things that are on special. Okay. okay, so now you're saving money, it's right there for you, right, and uh, featured, so it's a reminder, oh yeah, this one I'm supposed to be eating. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I, I spend a lot of time, my publishers laugh at me because um, when I'm done with the book, they're always say, okay, now we'll send it to the indexer, whatever an indexer is, but you know, it's like a, a, um, a program that okay. creates the index. I write my index and okay. I write it, I go through every recipe and pull out every main ingredient mm -hmm. and list that recipe under that ingredient in the back Great. because I like people to use the book from the back to the front. Nice. So if you get a CSA, if you go to the grocery yeah. store, you go to a farmer's market and you get what's fresh, local, cost effective, just mm -hmm. bring it home, even if you've never used it before. Look up that ingredient in the back of the book. You'll find oh. five or six recipes. Pick the one that's most appealing, and that's a great way to start. I love that idea. Yes, yeah, and it's fun. It's yeah, really it's fun. And you can do it with your neighbor who you share a CSA share with, mm -hmm. right? And then all of a sudden, now you have a meal because right. you made one recipe and she made the other. So it's half the work twice the the outcome right right and everybody gets nourished in the process and it's fun there was something else you said in your book that that just really resonated with me but you read my book cover to cover i'm I, impressed I, I, <laughs> I read your book <laughs> and what something that really resonated with me was when you go to the store kind of and you're faced with all those options 
allow that time to be the only time that you get bombarded with having to pick a choice. Right. <laughs> and then pick the choice that's healthier and bring it home. And then every time you're not opening your pantry, you're not bombarded with that choice again right. and again and again. And I was like, wow, that makes so like that really helps, I think, to put things into perspective. Mm -hmm. For people, like, why torture myself over and over and over again every time I open my pantry to look at those things that are not healthy for me mm -hmm. versus I left them on the shelf? Well, I'll tell you, my <laughs> husband brought home a pint of Talenti ice cream. I'm not paid by Talenti. It just happens to be really good ice cream. Yeah. And um, he said when he went out, I really need ice cream. It's fun. Go get it. He brought it home, and mm -hmm. he had some, and he put it in the freezer, and two days later it was gone. He said, I thought you weren't going to eat that, <laughs> right? Well, I said I wasn't, and when I told you I didn't want any, I had the intention, right? But if it's sitting mm -hmm. there mm -hmm. saying, eat me, then I'm going to eat it, right? right. Because I'm not made of steel. Like, I'm <laughs> only human. But, yeah, I mean, I, I think of that as setting yourself up for success. Yes. And, yes. Um, and that's multifaceted. There are mm -hmm. a lot of things that we can do to set mm -hmm. ourselves up for success, um, from food prep to how we shop, also where we keep our food, how we keep our food. Um, there's lots that we can do. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, we're going to talk about a lot of that in our mm -hmm. workshop, and I yes. talk about that in my classes quite a bit. Um, but, you know, certainly without a doubt, um, how we move through the grocery store mm -hmm. is a really important piece of that. And the more we set ourselves up for success yep. there, the less temptation we leave for ourselves here. Mm -hmm. And if you can stick to you know, what's in your home and keep your home clean, yep. then you can splurge when you go out. And you don't have to be so you know, rigid if you think of it as rigid or um, restricted. Mm -hmm. um, but the interesting thing is when you follow a particular path like eating real food, <laughs> Um, which sounds so simple, right? We're just going to eat real food. Right. But if you follow that path, you know, unprocessed food, 80% of the time, that informs, you know, everyone says, oh, eight, the 80-20 rule, and what they say about it is, you know, 80% of the time is good enough for good health, right? Um, it's so much more than that. Mm -hmm. Because 80% of the time informs your taste buds. It also informs all of your other choices the other 20% of the time. Mm -hmm. um, so 80%, that 80% rule is much more powerful than just um, just good health, which is powerful in right. and of itself. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And when I hear that, I also think how some people struggle with feeling like that 20% is like their, like their reward. Yeah. You know what I mean? For mm -hmm. for giving up. Yeah. Or like you said, becoming restrictive for that eighty percent. Mm -hmm. And one thing I'm excited about is and I would like to talk with you a little bit about is what are some ways that we can make like maybe some of your top few things that we can make that are delicious that have that sweetness, that we feel we are having a treat, mm -hmm. but we are not splurging to something that has tons of processed sugar, and we're actually giving our body still some nutrients. What are maybe like one or two of your favorite treats? Well, it's interesting that you said that make us feel like mm -hmm. we can have some sweetness, because mm -hmm. I don't crave sweet. So that right yeah. there shows you sweetness is in mm -hmm. everybody's weakness. Yeah. Everybody has their own special form yes. of weakness. <laughs> yes. um, so for me, and it's different by season, um, but like I am salt crazy. So okay. I cannot open a bag of chips. I don't care if it's the family size or a little individual thrown a lunchbox size. Yes. You know, if it's open, I'm eating it until yeah. it's gone, right? That, that <laughs> was my aunt, yes. <laughs> she, so, could, she could bypass any sweets, but it was the chips. Yeah, but with <laughs> sweetness, which is common for a lot yes. of people, um, for sure. And um, I think with sweetness, one of the big mm -hmm. issues is to understand that sweet if you're getting it non-nutritionally, sweet is an addiction, mm -hmm. okay? So um, refined sweet is an addiction. Mm -hmm. And to get yourself off refined sweet, very often increasing the amount of nutritional sweet in your diet right. can help to alleviate those cravings. Mm -hmm. um, but it is a craving based on an addiction. It's not yeah. a necessarily, well, it's, there's an imbalance there too. Right. Um, but the thing is that there are five tastes 
and sweet mm -hmm. is one of them. Yes. So it's a valid taste. So it's a misperception to think that sweets are bad. Mm -hmm. Right? Sweet is good. Yes. Sweet. Refined sugar is bad. Yeah. So what are those other forms of sweet? And for a lot of people, which it's kind of funny, I have my own little theory about why we're so addicted to chocolate, or I was going to say in this country, but I'll, I'll own it, in this home. <laughs> um, How about at this table? <laughs> at this counter. <laughs> um, but so I think chocolate is a sweet that so many people feel is this decadent, nourishes my soul kind of food. Mm -hmm. um, but at its essence, chocolate is bitter. Mm -hmm. So there's another question. Are we craving sweet because we're addicted to sweet? Are we craving sweet because we don't have the other tastes? Bitter, sour, pungent, salty, right? So sometimes it's a matter of getting nutritional sweet. Sometimes it's a matter of looking at what's the big picture of what I'm eating? Where mm -hmm. am I getting my t all of those tastes from, mm -hmm. right? And, um, and sometimes it has nothing to do with food at all. Right. I mean, a lot of times Absolutely. it has nothing to do with food at all. Mm -hmm. I mean, you walked in and you know, and maybe at the end we'll pull them out. But like, I have a puppy. I haven't been hungry since that puppy set foot in my home. Yeah. Right? Because I'm full of love and kisses <laughs> and he's soft and cuddly and mm, you know, like, and um, when you work all day and you come home at the end of the day, very often we're ravenous and insatiable. Mm -hmm. You know, that feeling mm -hmm. like you, I used to make dinner for my family and I say I used to because I quit, but um, I used to make dinner for my family and it's the end of the day and I'm eating it as I'm making it because I, yeah. I'm ravenous, I'm empty, but mm -hmm. it's not that I'm not, it's not hunger, mm -hmm. it's that I'm emotionally empty, mm -hmm. I'm drained. What I really need is not dinner, but love, hugs dancing with my family and laughing around the house and you know I need connection mm -hmm. and um, and sometimes it has nothing to do with that sometimes it's that we starve ourselves most of the day so we're gonna be insatiable right we feel we never fueled our activity we right. pulled from our reserves so we're depleted that depletion doesn't mm -hmm. get refueled just by sitting down and eating a meal right. so in our um, workshop we're going to spend a lot of time looking at the habits that brought us to where we are yep. and let's look at okay how can we tweak those and make them fit our lifestyle mm -hmm. so that we can achieve more balance because the more balanced the more nourished we are outside of food the less the food has to do all the heavy lifting right and it totally you know makes me think of you know when you're with family or friends like hours can go by and you don't even, you're like, oh, wow, we skipped lunch. Right, right. Because, right, it is about that connection. Yeah. It, is, it is about spending time together and feeling that love or that joy. Mm -hmm. um, and, and food doesn't even enter the scene. No, a lot of that is just trained, right? It's conditioning mm -hmm. that we, mm -hmm. what we've learned is that mm -hmm. we should be hangry or, you know, oh, I'm starving, I haven't eaten when, you know, like most of us have plenty of fuel to burn right mm -hmm. on our bodies. We're not mm -hmm. going to go, we're not going to starve if we miss a meal. Right. Um, but we're conditioned to think otherwise. Mm -hmm. And, um, and we'll talk about that too. There are all sorts of ways of tweaking and playing with that and seeing what's mm -hmm. really happening in your body yes. and what's learned. And Absolutely. could be unlearned. Yes. And I think that's the most important part. Yeah. And I also love the idea of, you know, with the cooking classes is, um, like you said, kind of joining in mm -hmm. and having people bring different pieces or different parts, whether it's a neighborhood thing or a group of friends and trying something new and making it also a social event. Which well, sounds really fun. The other thing is here, everybody sits around this island where we are mm -hmm. today, and mm -hmm. I'm in front, in front of the stove. Mm -hmm. And we pick apart every recipe we make, and at every stage we stop. Okay, here we have some, you know, onions, garlic, and ginger sautéing. What directions can we take this in? Right, so they, we're making one recipe. Okay. But we're talking about five, ten limitless variations, mm. which is really helpful for people because to right. be 
stuck with one recipe and having to follow it, you know, word for word, ingredient for ingredient when, mm -hmm. oh, but I don't have that one ingredient, you know? Mm -hmm. So how can I change right. it um, or make it my own or use what mm -hmm. I have in my kitchen or what an ingredient that my kids like? Use mm -hmm. it for the inspiration. Um, yes. To me, that's my goal. Even though I write books, mm -hmm. my goal is that people look in my books and make something that that works for them, right? right? That it inspires that kind of empowerment. Mm -hmm. And I think also it brings up a point that I've heard many times is people say, oh, I'm so sick of this meal. Like I make this every week. <laughs> so it kind of goes along. Like if I have one recipe, <laughs> I make the same thing every week. I know it's, it's about a, change and bringing something new to it. Okay, I I hear that. That is a that is one of those learned conditions, mm -hmm. um, and the proof of it is. And maybe a lot of your listeners have kids. Um, how many times could kids eat a plain bagel or macaroni and cheese? Right. Every meal, every single day. Right. I think some of them could. Yes. Yeah. So that <laughs> tells us right there that. The need for variety is adult. So, um, I, you know, if you follow my Instagram, I tend to post my breakfast because that's the question I get the most. What do you eat for breakfast? Okay. And um, they often look the same because I go to the refrigerator and I get whatever produce is in there and mm -hmm. I kind of saute it on up mm -hmm. and then I slice up. If there's always greens in it, some onion, ginger, who knows what, uh, maybe some daikon, carrots, like a rainbow of color, hopefully, yeah. slice up an avocado, take something fermented for my gut health to give mm -hmm. myself a good start. Usually I put like some hemp seed or pumpkin seed, some superfood mm -hmm. on the top, right? A little bit of Himalayan salt for all those trace minerals mm -hmm. and a drizzle of oil over that for a little dose of extra good fat, right? Mm -hmm. Or hot sauce or mm -hmm. pesto or who knows what, right? That's breakfast. Mm -hmm. When I eat that for breakfast, which is probably four or five days a week, yeah. I pretty much don't eat anything the rest of the day. Okay. I don't feel any cravings. I don't feel out of balance. I mm -hmm. feel super fueled, super charged, right? Yeah. I mean, I could have a salad. I could have a smoothie. The rest is just kind of like cake, you know? It doesn't mm -hmm. matter because I got all my colors, all my tastes, my fermented foods, my fats. Like, yeah. I am good to go. Awesome. So variety at that time doesn't really matter to me, mm -hmm. right? I mean, in the summer, I might take that same approach and put it into a smoothie, right? I take all those categories right. and put it into a smoothie because it'll be a little more cooling and refreshing. And in the winter, I might put them in a pot with a little bit of stock and turn it into a soup. But mm -hmm. for the most part, it's kind of the same idea, mm -hmm. right? Just all there, the same thing every single morning. Mm -hmm. When I stray from that, when I have my youngest makes awesome pancakes, protein pancakes. Okay. Um, and they're good, they're protein, but they're more carb than I'm used to. Um, and I, you know, who doesn't like maple syrup on their pancakes? I put maple syrup on it, so now I'm getting more carb, more protein, I'm sorry, more carbs, more sugar mm -hmm. than I'm used to, and way fewer colors of the rainbow and nothing right. fermented, right? We're not putting kimchi in the pancakes, right. although we could and take it in a totally different direction. Mm -hmm. um, but so when I do that in the morning, mm -hmm. the day's unpredictable. Mm -hmm. I spend more time wondering, mm, what is it that I want? Like, uh, what, what should I have for lunch? And um, what are we gonna have for dinner? Like, I just spend more time a little food focused and it's because I'm not fueled as well. Mm -hmm. So the need for variety is not always true. The need for nutrition and balance yes, is what's is true. Always true. And those are two different things. Absolutely. Thank you for explaining that. It was really great. Oh. <laughs> it really was just to, because I think you're right, a lot of things are, are learned. Mm -hmm. Whether they're learned generationally or they're learned just through those around you mm -hmm. in your environment. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and, you know, that's the benefit of, there are so many diets out there. You know, eating clean isn't a diet. It's right. an approach. Right. Um, it's almost like a foundation, a platform upon, you know, how to make choices. Mm -hmm. um, but when you try all these different diets, you know, there's, 
there's lots of things that might work for you and lots of pieces that won't. But every time we do that, we learn something about ourselves. Every time we eat a new food, oh, we're going to bring reality we into our video. <laughs> we're going to have an adorable little guest. <laughs> <laughs> and look. So every time we we bring those different um, perspectives in and try things, I, just, I call it like my little black dress theory, yeah. right? So um, you put on, mm -hmm. I could borrow your dress or you could borrow my dress, right? Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, it might be a little long on me, so I might have to take it out and I might have to take it in one place and let it out another in order for it to be perfect for me. Mm -hmm. and it's the same thing with diet and nutrition, mm -hmm. right? Um, that everybody's different. Right. Every single body is different. Mm -hmm. And so there is no one answer. Right. And because life changes, um, the goal really is just to be present in making the decisions to be educated, informed, right. and empowered, right. not to figure it out. It's just to do the best that we can do. Mm -hmm. You know, And sometimes yes. we make choices that uh, like, like right now he's going to eat my arm, which seems to me <laughs> thinks is the best thing for him to do. <laughs> um, sometimes we make choices that don't serve our best nutrition, mm -hmm. um, but they serve something else. Mm -hmm. And I just like to think that there's room for that too. Mm -hmm. uh, so. Nice. Hi. <laughs> Can you say hi to everybody? <laughs> Not so much. <laughs> And then you've had, since, since you did clean food, you have written two other books. Yes. And would just like to highlight anything that you feel would, um, that you'd like to highlight for each one of those. Um, the second one was Clean Star. So Clean Star is the second, which yeah. was a James Beard finalist. And, um, um, you know, really quick, easy, instant success, which a lot of people are looking for, yes. um, myself included. And um, you want to see the books too? And then there's um, Eat Clean, Live Well, which is the most mm -hmm. recent. Yeah. And um, that's kind of my favorite. Maybe it's because, yeah. you know, it's the most recent baby. Yeah. But um, what I love about it, it has fermentation in it and it has some lifestyle. So, you know, what does it mean to do a healthy cleanse in the spring mm -hmm. and to build your immune system in the fall and to preserve... Mm -hmm. um, you know, blending medicinal teas in the winter and things like that. So mm -hmm. in addition to, you know, 40 to 50 recipes for each season. Right. So it's, it's a right. big jam packed book. Yes. Yeah. I love the complexity of what you provide because you provide so many different pieces that you tie in really beautifully in your writing. Do you, Thank you. you uh, do your own writing because it's beautiful. Yeah, I do all my writing. <laughs> yes. And so no help with the writing. You do a great job. You certainly job. don't help. <laughs> Bringing it all together and giving food for thought on many different topics. Well, you know, when, book. when I wrote my first book, um, I wrote it and then we went to design it Oh, you're gonna be trouble in a second <laughs> um, with my you know really dear friend and he's like okay let's let's go we're mm -hmm. ready to design and I'm like oh my gosh Andy I changed my mind and um, I went back and I rewrote it and okay. part of that was just letting go of even more judgment mm -hmm. you know just that realization of um, what works for me may not work for the next person mm -hmm. you know that listening Listening to our bodies is the most important thing. Absolutely. Um, going easy on ourselves. I mean, especially women. Like, we judge, our, judge ourselves enough. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't need to judge ourselves more. So I try and keep a healthy perspective yes. in the books. Um, and it's real food, you know. Yeah. It's not made to make a beautiful picture. Mm -hmm. It's not, you know, made to get a social media following. Mm -hmm. It's made because, like you, like, I didn't go to culinary school. I'm mm -hmm. looking to put really good healthy food in my body right. and, um, and transferring my family. it to the kitchen for my family. Yeah, Absolutely. exactly. And so there's nothing contrived. It's not, you know, it's just about really good food. Mm -hmm. Clean food, right? Mm. Good, clean food. Woof. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess for our viewers, is there anything that you would like to have them kind of part, you know, take with them? from our interview today as like kind of a final thought 
or well, anything I just, you feel is important. I mean, I'm so looking forward to our workshop coming up, yes. and um, maybe when you finish this, you'll have like a little flash of that information. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but I just encourage people to connect. Yes. Um, whether if you go to my website, which is just my name, terrywalters.net, mm -hmm. um, or if you go to, <clears throat> mm -hmm. <laughs> or um, from there you can get to like my Instagram, my Facebook, and I just think, you know, like the more we connect and share our experiences, um, the more empowered we are. You're not Absolutely. going anywhere. And so I think that's, you know, the take, the most important takeaway. And my classes are listed on the website. If people Wonderful. would like to join us in this kitchen or hold this mischievous puppy, <laughs> and then forget all about our food issues right here. Um, yeah, I think that's just the, the best takeaway, and um, and I will look forward to connecting with them at our workshop yes. and uh, or wherever we meet in the in yes. the World Wide Web. <laughs> yes. Wonderful. Well, I just wanted to thank you all for watching, and I wanted to thank Terry for allowing us to come into your beautiful home and giving us some of your time thank you. to talk about really your phenomenal cookbooks. Thank you. So. Thank you so much. Well, I look forward to our workshops yes. and, and, and many more. Yes. Yes. So we will definitely be giving you guys all information, where you can find Terry, um, where you can find her classes, and learn more about what you're doing. And um, definitely we'll pre be providing information on our upcoming um, holistic wellness mini retreat that we are doing together in May. So we wish you all a wonderful and empowered day. Take care. Bye.